right, greetings. It's Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. And I wanted to uh, fill in some of the blanks um, concerning the beef that we processed on the 23rd. All right, now this is a slightly different process than we've done in the past. Uh, in the past, when we did beef, we were, we were doing them for people. So it was like, get them done and get them out and get paid. That was why we were doing it. These beef are for our family. And so we are more in the homestead model now. So I, I guess one of the things, one of the aspects of the homestead model is we would be doing more with less. Okay, so... We butchered those beef, or we slaughtered them, harvested them, November 23rd. And this is 2019, soon to be 2020. Um, and so today, it would be five weeks. It was five weeks ago. And I used very minimal refrigeration. Okay, so we did them on the 23rd of November. It was cold. I'm in northern Michigan, so it's... It's pretty cold. Um, and quartered the animals. Actually, we cut them in sixths because they were really big cows. Uh, they were steers, actually, and they were three years old, completely grass-fed. And we opted to do them ourselves this time because we wanted to have more control of the meat. We wanted to have more control of our food. And uh, not, uh, not throwing any stones at our processor. They do a fantastic job but they are limited <clears throat> in that they're paying people to do it and they needed to get it done they got to get them in and out in and out in and out so some of the smaller things uh you know get overlooked i mean they don't have time to do it all right so we uh set our minds this time that we were going to use every bit of this animal that we knew how to use and so we definitely used all the internal organs that we knew how to use. So we used the heart, we used the liver, we used the, the spleen. Uh, we, we did not use the stomach because we didn't know what to do with that yet. We have some ideas, but, you know, we, we had enough work to do with two animals. And stuff like that has to be taken care of first. And we didn't. We did not use the intestines. We just didn't. Um, we used all but about a couple of pounds of the fat. All right, so we pulled all the fat out and then we uh, preserved it, put it in, uh, put it in the, the cooler, <clears throat> uh, which we didn't even have to turn on because it was so cold outside. And then when we were making burger, we would use some of it in with the burger to make it a little bit more fat. It worked out good some of the best burger I ever had. Um, these beef, by the time we got around to cutting the majority of them, they had hung for about four weeks. And uh, they just hung in my maintenance shop, which is not heated. It was pretty cold. They almost were frozen through, not quite. And then we had a warm spell and we had no choice, but we had to get them all processed because we started to see some fluid dripping out of the, the center of the... Uh, you know, the, the bigger parts. And we just knew that, okay, it's time to do this. And what the hanging process did was really tenderize the meat a lot. So the steaks that we had off of them were, could be some of the best steaks I ever had. I had some good steaks when I was out West off of the beef that we raised, but we were sending to a guy, uh, five D's meats. And he really knew what he was doing as far as hanging and stuff like that and cutting. Now, we're kind of ham and eggers. We've done it a little bit. Uh, this is the most in-depth that we've ever gone on this. Um, and let me, let me tell you what we did. Like I said, we wanted to use as much of this beef as we could, as much of it as we could. Right now, in the shop, all I have left is what is in that bucket right there. Now it's steaming because that is a bunch of bones and in a big beef like that, you have a lot of structure. So I took all those bones and sawed them up in small pieces, you know, six, eight inches long, sawed them up with this 
I've been meaning to show this for a while. You know, people that are into butchering, home butchering. This is what's called a well saw. It's got a single blade on it and it just reciprocates back and forth. It doesn't make very much sawdust. Whereas if you use something like a sawzall, that makes quite a bit of sawdust. Um, all those bones went in these pots and got uh, boiled down. All right. And so then what, what that produces is this. Uh, this stuff's still hot, but this is bone broth. And we go through a lot of this. It's really, I can't tell you. I mean, you'd, you'd have to have it. Uh, the bones from a grass-fed animal are second to none. You know, they're really, really thick bones. These beef got a lot of exercise. It was uh, really nice marrow in the meat. And uh, <clears throat> we're really pleased with the bone broth that we get out of it. It really smells good in here. The stuff is just to kill for. We, we're not producing any milk right now because our cows are dry right now, but when you have really nice cream that you can put in that, it's, ah, I just can't explain it. It's really, really good. And it's good for you too. It's good for what ails you. Uh, okay, so we did use the bones. Um, I still have the hides out hanging. I hung them with the, the fur side down and the birds are doing a pretty good job of picking all the fat off of it. And I'm not sure if that's how it's done, but it's working out pretty good. I don't know if I'm gonna do anything with the hides, I might. I got some friends out on Beaver Island that use stuff like that. I may uh, see if they could use it, <clears throat> but uh, I don't know if I'll have time to make buckskin pants out of it or anything like that. <clears throat> and I don't need them. So um, the meat, we made as many steaks as we thought that we would need. And then uh, a few roasts, like maybe six roasts. And the rest of it went into burger because we do use a lot of burger and most of this meat's gonna be distributed to my kids and that's what they like. So um, that's what we did. Uh, the steaks, like I said, they were probably the best steaks that I've had. I did them on the grill the other night and it was just phenomenal. Um, totally grass fed. Uh, you have to cook them less and uh, you have to get used to eating a little bit rarer meat. Um, but even if they do get cooked a lot, they still maintain a lot of juiciness and things like that. Uh, the fat that will be in a grass-fed animal, that fat is fat from grass or from the forages that they're eating out in the field. These guys got no corn, no soy. Uh, in the wintertime, they eat dry hay. And in the summertime, they're out uh, grazing. So we grazed this year approximately six months. So that was really good. I mean, uh, you know, you have time into the animal, but you don't have dollars. You know, if you're buying hay and you're buying um, corn and soy, you know, you've got a lot of money into those animals. This here, the only money that I put out on these guys was for the calves, which I do need to get some new calves, some replacement calves. So my kids do chip in a little bit and then I can get the calves. Now, um, we were not as savvy at this as we could have been. Like we, doing this process as homesteaders, we learned there's a lot of areas that we could really uh, get a lot more out of this animal than we did. Um, although we did get a lot out of this animal. I, there is so much there, you can't believe it. Right now, I'm on my very last step, and we did this by the seat of our pants. We didn't have a plan. You know, I think now I could write a plan if I had to, but we just did it as it came available and worked it until it was done. <coughs> right now, I am, I sawed up the rest of the bones, <coughs> got them in the stew pot, and I, I saved back about 30 pounds of really lean meat off of the, the back legs. And I am slicing that up right now and I'm gonna make jerky out of it. And it's not something that I've really done uh, to any extent. 
we made a little bit out of deer, a little bit out of beef, but then we were always using the, the stove, the electric stove, and that is just counterproductive because then you have that stove on at 170 all night, and it's just a drain of electricity, and I can't, I can't really afford to do that. So this time I'm going to do it differently. I got a slicer here in the shop. That's a slicer. I haven't shown that piece of equipment very much but it's really a good thing for you to have. This one is, you know, heavily used. I bought it off a local butcher and I paid 400 bucks for it. But if I was gonna try and slice all this beef like this, if I was gonna try and do that with a knife, it'd be a long day, it'd be a long day. And I'd be sharpening the knife a lot. This has a rotary knife on it and it, uh, it just goes around and it's really quick. And then this stuff will go in a brine. I think what I'll do, <clears throat> like I've done with the pigs, um, <clears throat> next time we do a beef, I think we'll go through the steps of it. This time, I didn't show the shooting of the beef. I didn't show the bleeding of the beef or anything like that. Um, it, it was kind of a, <clears throat> we're going to try and start a ritual where the kids come for that day and, you know, they're, my boys help and the, the girls can do things in the house and stuff like that and make lunch and you know get ready for when we're finished and have it be kind of a family kind of a family day if the girls want to join in that's fine if the boys want to go in the house and dust they can do that too I it's not like a, a divided line but generally the girls don't really want to help skin and they're not really into the whole gutting process that's just the way it goes at my house I don't know about other places I don't want to seem too uh, too tough on that um, but it was a good process, so we're at five weeks right now, and we're finally complete. Finally complete with it. Uh, it wasn't an everyday process. It was, <clears throat> you know, we knew we wanted the beef to hang for, you know, as long as we could up to a point. I mean, 20 days is what they say is, 21 days is what they say is a maximum. And we got all of that. <clears throat> we got all of that in. <clears throat> um, the front legs... Uh, we bone those right away. Uh, we got the bones out of them. We got the meat and we cubed it up. A lot of it went in cans and that'll be used throughout the years, you know, for different things. Uh, out of quite a bit of it. Did not make any steaks off the front. Um, the briskets, which is that piece that wobbles down in the front of a, of a beef, we corned that and that's a process where you take the, that brisket off you put it in a solution of brine and it sits there for a number of days and then you can smoke it but we didn't we cooked it cut it in pieces vac sealed that and that went in the uh in the freezer <clears throat> and that'll be used you know in like boiled dinner that were irish so we have to eat those things mm -hmm.